Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the show that makes big winners out of the lowest scorers. Let's meet today's players. And couple number one. Hi, I'm Alan. This is my mum, Sam, and we're from Manchester. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Kayla from Nottingham. This is my lovely girlfriend, Olivia, from Derby. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Julie, and this is my lovely sister, Catherine, and we are from Jarrell in Tyne and Weir. And finally, couple number four. Hi there, I'm David. This is my wife, Marissa, and we're from Woodley near Reading. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. A very warm welcome to the show. It's lovely to have you here. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. Flushing our heads down the bog of ignorance like a brutal school bully is my pointless friend, is Richard. Hiya. Hello, everybody. Hello there, how are you? I I'm very well, thank you. Good. Very well, yeah. Um, I, took a, I took a risk today, and it, I, I just about got away with it. Just as we walked on set, yeah. I started a sherbet lemon, and all the way through your introduction and everyone's introductions, I was, it was just, I was just getting through it. Were you crunching or just sucking? I, in the end, I had to crunch. I had to crunch. Which I didn't like to, because of microphones no. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I had to right at the very end, and I just got it finished just before you came to me. Oh, it's beautifully so timed. Nice, well done, it? you. Uh, welcome back to uh, two pairs who've been with us before, Catherine and Julie, through to the head-to-head -head last time. Lovely to have you back. Uh, and Marissa and David, now one show, one round, 200 clubs. <laughs> Listen, that's OK. That's OK. If you did it again, then we're going to have words. But uh, one show, that's all right. It's a nice way to start. Yeah. Quite, quite cool. Just bed in. Something to talk about. Yeah. Uh, but lovely to see more of you this time, though. Uh, keep giving away the jackpot. Yeah. Uh, but last time, Kitty and Georgia came up against rap albums, did they not? Yeah. They aced it. Yeah. Kitty and Georgia won the jackpot last time, so today's jackpot starts off back at £1,000. There we are. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. Now, remember, the pair with the highest score at the end of each round gets eliminated, so you just have to keep your scores low and everything will be great. Best of luck to everybody. Our first category this afternoon is... Words and letters. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second, and whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK. And the question concerns... Words containing the letter Y, Richard. Uh, yeah, seven clues on each board, two words containing the letter Y. We will give you the initial letter of each word as well and the number of letters in it. Seven on the first board, seven on the second, 14 words with the letter Y in them to have a go at at home. There we are. Can't put it fairer than that. Um, here's our first board of seven clues to words with the letter Y in them. And we have got underground vault, often found beneath a church, C5. To link gadgets or set watches to show the same time, S11. Two-wheeled steerable vehicle pedalled by rider's feet, B7. 19th century game of pressing and flicking plastic discs into a cup, T11. Fertilised human egg in its early stage of development, E6. Tropical circular typhoon which originates over warm water, C7. And small beetle, typically red with black spots, L. Eight. Sam, welcome to Pointless. Thank you. Lovely to have you with us. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, I'm Sam. I'm in Manchester um, and I'm a school administration officer. Very good. What do you like doing for fun, Sam? Oh, uh, reading, cinema, cooking. Lovely. Good. Now, Sam, these things all have a Y in them. They do. Um, how are we feeling about our board of, of Y things? Yeah, it looks good, she says. Um, I think I am going to go with fertilised human egg embryo. Embryo, says Sam. Let's see how many of our 100 people agree with Sam and said embryo. Embryo is exactly right. Takes us down to 67. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, well played, Sam. It's scored slightly more than I thought it would do, actually. Uh, yeah. Every, yeah. Mm. To... It's quite easy to work out some of the answers, quite hard to work out which is the lowest score is. There we go. Um, and now, Olivia, tell us all about yourself. Um, yeah, so I'm a recent chemistry graduate uh, and I'm currently interning at an engineering consultancy firm. And whereabouts is that? Well, they're based in Coventry, but um, it's like remote, so I, I don't I... have to. Are you commute. quite enjoying that? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's know, interesting. Suddenly in the real working yeah, world. Yeah, like, yeah, it's strange. Like, yeah. I'm not used to it. I'm not used to getting a paycheck. It's it's very weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, there we are, but fun, though. Yeah, yeah, very fun, yeah. Olivia, our why things. They all have whys in, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think I know, too. Um, I 
think I'm going to go for the top one. Um, and I think it's crypt. Crypt. Yeah. Says Olivia. Let's see how many of our 100 people said crypt. Fifty-four for Crypt. Yeah, very well played. Bang in the middle there, doing all, all the work a vowel would normally do. Yeah, comes oh. from uh, originally comes from the Greek word for hidden, which is why cryptography I was and just all of that kind of stuff when you yes. talk about codes and things yeah. like that. Clever. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Catherine, welcome back. Uh, lovely to have you with us again. Remind us all about yourself, Catherine. Uh, I'm a nursery manager from Jarrow, um, and I love musicals. I love taking my niece to. See musicals whenever we can. Where do you tend to go? Do you go up to Newcastle? Newcastle or this? Or Sunderland, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Sunderland so, Empire. Sunderland Empire, yeah. They're, they have great <laughs> things there. Yeah, they do. What's been the, the biggest success? Um, Joseph, Matilda. Uh, oh, brilliant. Love, she loves Matilda, Excellent. yeah. Excellent. So, Very good. Just anything we can sing along to. Lovely. Uh, <laughs> Catherine, of course, you've got a Y in as well. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't, Catherine doesn't always have a wine. It doesn't. Um, <laughs> in this case, it does. Um, so, yes, I hope you'll feel very much at home with this board. I do. Uh, what would you like to go um, for? I, know, I think I know them all. Um, I think I'm going to go with the second one down and say synchronise. Synchronise, says Catherine. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Synchronise, absolutely right. 67 is our high score, 54 is our low, and you pass them both. Look at that. You leave them in your way, 47. Yeah, there's only two exclusively female sports at the Olympics, and those are synchronised swimming, or artistic swimming, as it's called, and rhythmic gymnastics. Thank you very much. Oh, you've got to hope rhythmic doesn't appear on the next board. <laughs> oh, what if it's... Or gymnastics. Or gymnastics. Oh, then I'm in big oh, trouble. No. Or Catherine. Or Catherine. <laughs> wow, there's so many traps so now. So many pitfalls. Or pitfalls, or pitfalls with a Y. <laughs> yeah, P-Y-T. Yeah. Oh, OK, right. Well, just tread very careful-ish. Oh, <laughs> that's really... That's terrific. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Uh, Marissa, Hello. welcome back. Lovely to have you with us again. Tell us all about yourself. Yes, yeah, so um, I'm a lecturer in entrepreneurship at the Henley Business School at the University of Reading. See, Henley, it's got a wine as well. They're just literally having to change this board constantly now, <laughs> the, the next board. University. Your university. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're completely right. Uh, uh, tell us what you love getting up to for fun, Marissa. Yes, well, mostly fun. I like to play netball, my chosen sport. No wise in that one. Uh, I've been playing since I was about 10. As you can see, I'm pretty tall, so I'm pretty handy in defence. Very good indeed. Now, uh, Marissa, this board is all yours. Do you want to talk us through it? Yes. Um, well, I had a mental block last time, so I think let's get the right answer at least this time round. So, um, two-wheel... Vehicle, bicycle. I think the 19th century one is tiddlywinks, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, tropical circular typhoon cyclone and small beetle. First, I thought ladybird, but it didn't match. So I thought ladybug, but I wasn't sure. So um, I'm going to go with cyclone. Cyclone? Yeah. OK, cyclone. We'll revisit ladybird in a moment. But uh, let's see how many of our 100 people said cyclone. 29. That's fantastic. What a great score. Well played, Marissa. Yeah, we were just saying, it's a, it's a sort of trying to work out what scores lowest on this, because the answers can be quite obvious. You, you chose the best one you possibly could have done. Best answer on the board, Cyclone, so very well played. Uh, yeah, Ladybird, it, it is Ladybird. Is it, is it, I thought it was a nine. Ah, <laughs> there you go. Saying, sorry. Ah. I'm short-sighted. <laughs> well, that's lucky, because it would have scored you 75 <laughs> points anyway. Um, the 19th century game, yeah, absolutely right, it's Tiddlywinks. That would have scored you 53, and a bicycle would have set you back 65 points. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we are halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. 29, Marissa, the best score of the past by some distance, because we then travel up to 47, where we find Catherine and Julie, 54, where we find Olivia and Caleb, and then up to 67, Sam and Alan. So, Alan. It will fall to you. Well, it may not fall to you, but, uh, yeah, let's have a lovely low score from you on the next board. Uh, good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line. Now, will the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> OK, let's put seven more clues to words containing the letter Y on the board, and here they come. We've got... Elastic polymer fabric often used to make stockings. N, five. Scientific study of the human mind and behaviour. P, 
10. Vast, bottomless chasm deep in the ocean. A. 5. Process by which plants transform light into chemical energy. P. 14. Amphibious duck-billed mammal found in Australia. P. 8. Synthetic resin used in the manufacture of music records. V. 5. And ancient Egyptian writing material made from the so-called paper plant. P. 7. There we are. David, welcome back. Um, tell us all about yourself. I am uh, the fitness manager of a local day spa from where we live. But most importantly, we are parents to a beautiful baby boy, nearly two years old. Oh, that's lovely. What's his name? He's Theo. Theo. Good, good afternoon slash early evening. Theo. Now, uh, David, when the day spa is done, when the, the toweling robes have been put into their baskets, uh, what, what do you like to get up to? Well, I'm really into my sports, just like Marissa, but I'm also on the other end of the spectrum, really into Star Trek. So uh, me uh -huh. and my mum, we really, uh, we really like Star Trek. That's rather lovely. So you and your mum do Star Trek yep. together. We even go to conventions. <laughs> wow, you do like Star Trek. Right, OK. David, you're on 29. <laughs> if you can score 37, even at this early stage, thanks to Marissa, uh, you can get into the next round. What are you going to go for? Uh, fairly comfortable, I think, with most of these. Um, I'm going to go for the bottom one and say Papyrus. Papyrus, says David. Let's see how many of our 100 people agree with him. Here is your red line. Papyrus, absolutely right. Down he goes to 51. Not bad at all. Takes your total up to a lovely round 80. Yeah, they made all sorts of things out of papyrus sandals and ropes and things, and they used to uh, roast the, uh, the bottom part of the plant as well and eat it. See, that's brilliant. Bit of everything. It's a bit of everything, papyrus. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Julie, welcome back. Lovely to have you with us again. Tell us more about yourself. Uh, so, as I said last time, I'm the pastor of a Baptist church. Um, I have a lovely ladies' group that meets that are called Women of the Word, but I call them my wow ladies. The wow and, ladies. Yeah, and that, they're just so they're gorgeous, they're so supportive and just lovely, and they absolutely love Pointless. So oh, that's excited. lovely. The wow ladies. <laughs> Hello, wow ladies. Hello, wow ladies. <laughs> um, Julie, you're on 47. 32 or less gets you through. I'm kind of like question me spelling of the one that I want to go for, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it. Persevere. I'm going to go for the Australian duck, build mammal, and platypus. Platypus. Platypus, says Julie. Let's find out. Here's your red line. Let's see if we can get you below that with platypus. It's right. Down goes to 64. Takes your total up to 111. Uh, the, the first European naturalist to ever see a duck bill platypus thought they were a hoax. As you would. Thought they were, yeah, thought someone had, had put a duck's bill yeah. onto, a, onto a mammal. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Caleb, welcome to Pointless. Lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, thanks very much. So I'm currently a health psychology student at King's, studying for my master's. Very good. What sort of stage are you at? Are you, are you, are you, how many years is the master's? Is that... uh, so it's just a year long just master's. A year. Right. Uh, I'm currently beginning my clinical placement at the minute. Um, it's getting to the stage where deadlines are stacking up, to be honest with you. <laughs> OK, so yeah, good. Well, very good luck with all of that. You are on 54, which means 56 or less gets you through. OK. What are you going to go for? So I think vast bottomless chasm deep in the ocean as made famous by Nietzsche, I'm going to say Abyss. Abyss, says Caleb, as made famous by Nietzsche. I like that. OK, Caleb, here is your red line. Let's see if we can get you below that with Abyss. Well, down goes Abyss, appropriately. Uh, and it, of course, gets you through to round two, 25. Very well done indeed. 79 is your total. Yeah, in 2019, an American explorer travelled 10,000 metres down into the Mariana Trench. Genuinely, it found a plastic bag at the bottom. Oh, God, that's depressing. Yeah. Really depressing. There you go. Um, there we are. Thank you very much indeed. Alan, you were waiting so patiently all this time. <laughs> Welcome to Point. It's good to have Thank you here. You. Uh, tell us all about yourself, Alan. Uh, so, currently, I am studying my A-levels. I'm doing history, geography and law, hoping to go to university next year. OK. Do you know where you want to go to university? If you, or is, are you still applying um, at this stage? I've still got a few interviews left, waiting for offers from them, so we'll see what happens. OK, well, fingers tightly crossed, Alan. Uh, now, this board is all yours. Do you want to talk us through it? OK, so I think the top one is nylon, and then the scientific study is psychology, and then 
I think the music record is vinyl. I think I'm going to go for the process by which plants transform light and photosynthesis. Let's see how many of our 100 people said photosynthesis. There is your red line. It's right. Ah, no bad luck. 67 is exactly the same score as Sam got in the first <laughs> pass. So that's nice. Beautiful symmetry to that. Um, 134 is your total. Uh, yeah, left in an impossible situation there, I'm afraid. Uh, unlucky. You knew them all. Let's see what they would have scored you. Nylon. Would have knocked you out with 62. Psychology. Uh, would have knocked you out with 48. And vinyl. Would have knocked you out with 63, I'm afraid. Oh, that was tough. Yes, Hobson's choice, really, there, Alan, I'm afraid. Anyway, there we are. That brings us to the end of our first round. It means we have to say goodbye to our first pair, and I'm afraid, Alan and Sam, it is you. Oh. I'm so We'll say goodbye, but it's not. It's au revoir. Oh, yeah. Because we will see you again. We're already looking forward to seeing you again in the next show, and I'm sure you'll be able to take it much further. But meantime, thank you very much indeed, Alan and Sam. But for the remaining three pairs, now time for round two. Well done, everybody. We made it through our first Y word round, and that's no mean feat. Anyway, well done, everybody. Best of luck for round two. Our category for round two this afternoon is pop music albums. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? Mm -hmm. And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many acts who had the UK's biggest selling albums of the 2010s as they could. Richard. Yep, uh, at the end of 2019, the official charts company released their list of the 100 best selling albums of that decade. We're looking for any artist who had at least one album on that list, please. Don't have to have been released in that decade, could have been released years before, but any of the top 100 selling albums, just looking for the artists behind any of them, please. Thank you very much indeed. So, Caleb. Hmm. <laughs> Mm, not too strong a one. Um, so I'm going to guess the Black Eyed Peas. Black Eyed Peas, says Caleb. Let's find out if that's correct. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it, if it is. No. Bad luck, Caleb. It's one of those rounds, I'm afraid, where I think there'll be lots of pointless answers and lots of hundreds. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, are. Caleb, it's not in the albums, I'm afraid. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Catherine. Music isn't great. Um, I'm going to say Michael Ball. Michael Ball, says Catherine. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. No. I'm afraid that's another incorrect answer. Uh, scores you 100 points. It's going well, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> Why don't we do bands with a Y in them? Would that help everybody? Oh, would that uh, love that'd be that. easier? Yeah, no, uh, no Michael. But again, he releases albums in Christmas. He does all sorts of things. But yeah, not, uh, not one of the not 100 best selling albums of, the, of that decade. OK, Marissa. Yes. So, um, first person that came to mind, I use her a lot as a case study in my classes. So I'm hoping it's right. I'm going to say Beyonce. Beyonce, says Marissa. Let's see if the case study herself, Beyonce, is on that list. Yes, she is. There we are, Marissa. Very well done indeed. Look at that. Eight for Beyonce. Very well done. Well played, Marissa. Her album four was uh, in the 70s on that list. I think she works as a case study for pretty much anything you want, Beyonce. <laughs> yeah. Go along with that. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, before we come back down the line, let's have a look at those scores. Only two scores between the three pairs. Eight, the best score of the past, Marissa. Very well done indeed. Then 100s where we find Catherine and Julie and Caleb and Olivia. So, Julie and Olivia, I'm guessing it'll be between the pair of you to decide who stays and who leaves. So good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, so David, remember, we're looking for the name of any act who had one of the top 100 selling albums of the 2010s. Uh, they've got a couple in mind, uh, but I think I'm going to go for Stormzy. Stormzy says, David, let's see how many of our 100 people said Stormzy. There's your red line, David. No, I'm afraid not Stormzy. That scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 108. Sorry, David, game on now, though, isn't it? Yeah. Blimey. Exciting. That's uh, podiums one and two have got something to aim at. 
Yeah, this is where it gets really spicy. So, Julie, we need a score of seven or less from you for a place in the head-to-head. -head. Yes. So, music, as with Catherine, is not a strong subject for either of us. I've got ones that I think will definitely be right, but I think might score a lot of points. So then it's deciding, do I go for a risky one? They're and always the difficult. Club. Well, exactly, because we've got, there are only 100 albums on that list, aren't there? So, hmm. Right, I'm going to go for a safer one, I hope. I may still be completely wrong. Uh, I'm going to say Little Mix. Little Mix, says Julie. Here is your red line. Let's see if Little Mix is right. Let's see if that gets you below that red line. It's right, Julie. Well, Beyonce scored eight. You've done it. Oh, Dagger to four. Yeah. Very well done indeed. Look at that, Julie. 104. Wow. That's going to make things difficult for Olivia. Mm, yeah, very well played. Two albums on the list. In fact, Glory Days and Get Weird for Little Mix. One of those bands who sort of who got bigger and bigger and bigger as the years went by, which is not, not the usual career trajectory of a, of a talent show band, but uh, no. still going strong. Still going strong and brilliant. Now, Olivia, you need to score seven or less. Seven or less. Oh, I think I'm going to struggle with this. Um, I've got one in mind. I just I don't know if it'll be low enough. Um, I think I'm going to say Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars. Yeah says Olivia. Oh, that's a great answer. <laughs> there we are. The red line is there. Let's see if Bruno Mars will get you below that red line and into the head-to-head. -head. Bruno Mars is right. So there's 108, there's 104. Oh, it goes down to two. Very well done indeed. 102 is your total, and that's one you were placed in the head-to-head. -head. Wow, what a turnaround as well on that second pass. <laughs> really unlucky with Stormzy. Perfectly good answer, just uh, not on the list, I'm afraid. Um, I'll give you all the answers from eight downwards, so all the answers that would have seen you through. It's an interesting list. Uh, you would have got seven points for Queen. As I say, these are Queen's greatest hits, sells and sells forever and ever and ever. Oasis would have scored you six, four points, uh, along with Little Mix for Justin Bieber and Sam Smith. Three points for Amy Winehouse, Eminem, Katy Perry, Robbie Williams. Two points for ABBA, Emily Sande, Fleetwood Mac, Jesse J, Ollie Murs. Pink one for Arctic Monkeys, David Guetta, Elvis Presley, Foo Fighters, George Ezra, Guns N' Roses, JLS, Lana Del Rey, Mumford & Sons and Paloma Faith. And now here are your pointless answers. There are quite a few. Bastille, Calvin Harris, Eddie Goulding. Florence and the Machine, Jess Glynn, Kings of Leon are a pointless answer. You could have said Michael Bublé rather than Michael Ball. Rag and Bowman, Tiny Temper. Uh, there's Alicia Keys, Bob Marley and the Wailers, Bon Jovi, Chase and State, there's ELO, Gary Barlow, Jake Bug, James Bay, London Grammar, Noel Gallagher's High Flying Bird, Stereophonics, The Script, Westlife, Whitney Houston as well. Uh, the biggest answer of all, One Direction third, Ed Sheeran second. Top was Adele, and she had the two highest selling albums of uh, that decade, number one and number two. Amazing. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. That brings us to the end of our second round. Means we have to say goodbye to our second pair, David and Marissa. Bad luck. But anyway, listen, we'll see you next time. Look forward to it very much. Meantime, thank you so much, David and Marissa. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, now time for the head to head. Congratulations, Caleb and Olivia, Catherine and Julie. You are now one step closer to the final. And the chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £1,000. But before we play the head-to-head, -head, let's see if we can't boost that jackpot a little bit by finding a couple of pointless answers. Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many place names of Roman Britain as they could. Richard. Uh, yeah, we're going to show you six place names. Uh, as always, two of them are pointless answers, two of them score points, and two of them we made up. So it's a Roman or no man. Like it. Roman or no man. Brilliant. Do you see? Mm, got it. Yeah. Like it. Um, no what? man. No or no. Yeah. Or Roman. No man or Roman. Good. OK, so we are looking for the pointless Roman uh, <laughs> place names here. And we have got Moridunum, Niobe, Vectis, Castorium, Aquae Sulis, and Luguvalium. 
Uh, you, any clue? I was, no. <laughs> I was hoping no Snottingham would, would come up because that's yeah. what Nottingham used to be. I knew that. Aqua Solis, that's probably like, that's something to do with water and like Solis, maybe earth. Something, something. Yeah, I think it could be something like yeah. that. That might be a good one. To um, go for. Okay, so Caleb and Olivia, what are you going to go for? Go Aqua? For? Yeah. I think Aqua Solis. Yeah. Aqua Solis. Yeah. Okay, Aqua Solis. Is that a pointless Roman place name? Well, it's definitely a place. <laughs> Two of our 100 people got Aqua Solis. Catherine and Julie, over to you. Can we find a pointless what do, answer? Here? What do you think? Uh, uh, I don't know. What are you? Going? Are you? Drawn at any? No. I don't know if we should go Moradunum. Moradunum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Moradunum. Uh, okay, Moradunum. Yeah. Let's find out. Moradunum, is that a pointless Roman place name? He's right. He's right. Can it get down to pointless? Oh, yes! yes. Done. Wow, ladies. <laughs> Look at that. Richard. Very, very well done, yes. Carmarthen, that's the, the Roman name. Um, so, let's put a couple in. Uh, Niobe was an incorrect answer, uh, and Victus is the Isle of Wight. So, of those remaining two, Castorium and Lugavallium, one of those is incorrect and one of them is a pointless answer. I'm inclined to think Castorium is, uh, is, is real and pointless, therefore, and Lugavallium sounds like something, yeah, sounds like something on a prescription. OK, let's take a look. So you think Castorium is the other pointless answer? Is that right? It is oh. not, I'm afraid. It's Lugavallium, which was the Roman name for Carlisle. Castorium is something they put in, like, uh, vanilla flavourings and perfumes. It comes from beavers, and it doesn't come from a good end of the beaver, either. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, an awful it lot of what you're wearing... Comes out of the... Back, that comes from the... Whoa. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, Castorium. Yeah, you wouldn't you want, you, certainly you wouldn't want to live there. Uh, you certainly wouldn't want to live. Anyway, enough of this. Right, well done. Yeah, you managed to find a pointless answer, which means we add £250 to today's jackpot, takes a total up to £1,250. But who will be playing for it? Let's find out in the head-to-head. -head. Now, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot, and you are now allowed to confer. That's nice. Here comes your first question, and it's all about... Hosts of the News Quiz on Radio 4. Richard. Yep, I'm going to show you five pictures now of people who've hosted the News Quiz on Radio 4, but who are these people, please? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five News Quiz hosts, and here they come. We've got... A... B... C... D and E. There we are, five hosts of the news quiz. Caleb and Olivia, you're our low-scoring pair, our golden couple, so you get to go first. I'm thinking D. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So I believe we're going to go for D, um, who we think is Miles Jopp. Miles Jupp, say Caleb and Olivia. Now, Catherine and Julie, can you talk us through that board? No. V well, D is Sandy Toxvig. B Nish Kumar. C, I don't know. And e. I think E looks a bit like Barry Norman, but I don't know. I don't know. Do you think we should go B? I think we should... Well, I think theirs will be quite low, so... Oh, we'll go B. Yeah, we'll go yeah, B. You're going to go B, Nish Kumar. So, we've got Miles Jupp, we've got Nish Kumar. Uh, Caleb and Olivia went for Miles Jupp for D. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. Miles Jupp, absolutely right. And that goes down to 10. Very well done indeed. Catherine and Julie, meanwhile, have gone for Nish Kumar for B. Let's see how many of our 100 said Nish Kumar. Nish, absolutely right. 10 is the only score we have, and 7 beats it. There we are. Very well done indeed. Catherine and Julie, after one question, you are up 1 0. Yeah, well done. So, Sandy Toxvig, you're quite right, is uh, A, which would have scored you 59. I once did a radio show with Sandy Toxvig and Miles Jupp, and we had to get a taxi back from the theatre to a hotel. Uh, so, I've got Sandy Toxvig here, Miles Jupp here, and uh, 
Miles had taken over the news quiz from her like about a year before. And the taxi driver goes, Sandy, I've always wanted to have you in the cab, Sandy. Can I just say, I used to love you as the host of the news quiz. It is rubbish now. <laughs> oh, it's rubbish. <laughs> and Miles is sitting, I've never, you know Miles, he thinks everything in the world is funny. I've never seen someone laugh so much in their life. <laughs> Um, let's take a look at the rest of these. E, you're absolutely right. This Barry Norman, who was the first ever host of the News Quiz, scored more than uh, Miles and Nish, though, was scored you 13 points. And the best answer on the board, C? I mean, that's such a Radio 4 face. Isn't it? <laughs> Isn't it? Um... Uh, did two cents hosting the News Quiz, Simon Hoggett, the journalist, uh, would have scored you one point. Very well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, here comes your second question. This is interesting. Catherine and Julie. You get to answer it first, but Caleb and Olivia, it's you who have to win this one to stay in the game, so best of luck. Our second question is all about famous plays, Richard. Uh, yep, yeah, we're going to show you the titles now of five uh, plays that have appeared in Time Out's list of 50 best plays of all time. We want to know who wrote these plays, please. We'll show you their initials as well. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five plays, and here they come. The Importance of Being Earnest, O.W., Cloud Nine, CC, A Raisin in the Sun, LH, Death of a Salesman, AM, and Twelfth Night, WS. Catherine and Julie will go first. Oh, I've got this easy. I don't know. Hmm? I don't know. I don't know. I would probably go. Do you think we should go Death of a Salesman? Death of a Salesman? I'll go Death of a Salesman. in the top one. Yeah, yeah, I think. Okay. Right, we're going to go Death of a Salesman, Arthur Miller. Mm. Arthur, Arthur Miller. Miller. Say, Catherine and Julie, beautifully unanimous there. Uh, Caleb and Olivia, do you want to talk us through this board? Uh, not really. Yeah, no, not particularly. <laughs> I think we're up against some pretty uh, expert knowledge as well. Yeah. So, uh, importance of being earnest is Oscar Wilde. Don't know Cloud Nine, don't know Raising the Sun, and Twelfth Night, of course, is William Shakespeare. Do you think Oscar, Oscar Wilde? Yeah, yes, so I, I think, think we'll go Oscar Wilde, the important be yeah. OK, Oscar yeah. Wilde. So we have Arthur Miller versus Oscar Wilde. Catherine and Julia are saying Arthur Miller for Death of a Salesman. How many of our 100 said that? Is right. Arthur Miller, that's a great answer. Down it goes to 21. <laughs> Caleb and Olivia, meanwhile, have gone for Oscar Wilde for the importance of being earnest. How many of our 100 said that? Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde is right. And that goes down to 35. And that means very well done indeed. Catherine and Julie, after only two questions, you are straight through to the final 2-0. Very nicely played. Um, now, you're quite right about Shakespeare, of course. It's Twelfth Night. The only person to have two um, plays on that list, Hamlet was number one. Uh, scored you 52 points. Now, the other two, Cloud Nine, you might know. Carol Churchill. Carol Churchill, absolutely. She would have scored you two points. Very well done if you said that. And A Raisin in the Sun, do you know I'm that? I'm struggling with that one. So Lorraine Hansbury would have scored you one point. Very well done if you said that at home. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, Caleb and Olivia, it is you. You've covered yourselves in glory uh, across this, your first show. Your first show. I mean, our other newcomers literally just ducked out at the end of the first round. <laughs> you stuck it through, you, you went through the motions as if you wanted to go through to the final, and uh, then you stepped back at the last moment. Or perhaps you were edged back by Catherine and Julie. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we're going to see you next time. We'll look forward to that very much. Thank you very much indeed, Caleb and Olivia. But for Catherine and Julia, it is now time for the Pointless Fun. <laughs> Congratulations, Catherine and Julie. You've seen off all the competition and you have won our coveted Pointless Trophy. You now get a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £1,250. £250 of that, you won yourselves. So there you are. It's a story of twos, I'd say. It's your second show, 2 nil in the head-to-head. -head. And there are two of you. There we are. There we are. <laughs> story of twos. Um, what do you want to see come up in this last round? Um, I think maybe TV, possibly. Films. US TV, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Who Film. Was? Um, I don't and know. geography, maybe? Possibly, yeah. Could name random countries? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. well, listen, we'll see what happens. Four things will appear on this board behind me. And sometimes, even if they look terrifying, sometimes behind one of those 
there might be a, a nicer category. You never know. Let's just see what, what we can offer you this afternoon. Defeated US sports teams, the UK compared to other countries, Charlie Chaplin, and words in the titles of novels by romance authors. What do we think? Uh, I think, UK well, compared. definitely not the top one. No. And Charlie, Charlie Chaplin. Chaplin. Unless it's the film Chaplin. I've never seen it. OK. Um, <laughs> and not, the... not romance authors, cos I don't know. So I think probably the UK, UK compared, compared to other countries, country. and we'll just name random countries. countries. Yeah. You yeah. did say geography? Yes, yes, we did. This sounds like a geography question, yeah. really, yes. we'll it. doesn't it? Fingers crossed, Richard. Uh, it is a geography question, and it is a name random countries question as well, so uh, you could get some money. Very best of luck. I think uh, you could fill your boots here. We are looking for any country which is bigger than the UK but has a smaller population. We are looking for any country which is smaller than the UK but has more borders. Or we are looking for any island country which has a shorter coastline than the UK. It's any island country with no borders. So we are looking for countries that are bigger than the UK but have fewer people. We're looking for countries that are smaller than the UK but have more borders. Or any of those island countries with a shorter coastline than the UK. Very best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot of £1,250 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yes. Marvellous. Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK, so I think it's random island, island countries. Yeah. So... Santa Mia Principe. Solomon Islands. Mm -hmm. Do you think... Oh, it's St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, Antigua and Barbuda. Barbuda. I think that usually scores points. Right. Um, um, I think we should go Santa Mia and Principe. Mm -hmm. Solomon Islands. Mm -hmm. What one? Only 37 seconds. Um, can you think of any other um, way? Which other ones? It's Marshall Islands one. Mm hmm Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. It's night. It's got island. I think St Vincent and the Grenadines, because that's usually what we'll go to when we're it watching is. it on the telly. It is. It is. Do you think? Yeah. Right, well, so what's the way we're doing? Santa Mia Principe. Principe. St Vincent and the Grenadines. Grenadines. And do you think Solomon, Solomon Islands? Islands. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. OK, yeah, we're okay, happy. OK, you're happy. There we go. We're going to stop the clock. Look at that, three answers as well. And what I really love about this is this is geography taught by pointless. It is completely, completely oh, 100%. Like all of mine as well, I might add. I was going to say, as I was listening to it, it was, it was a pointless masterclass. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Even saying, oh, no, that, that's not normally pointless. That does a, yeah. yeah. Antigua and Barbuda are not normally pointless. No, so. no. I love it. Um, now then, what three answers can you give me? Santa Mia and Principe. Santa Mia and Principe. Solomon Islands. Solomon Islands. And St Vincent and the Grenadines. And St Vincent and the Grenadines. So which category are you putting those in? The bottom one. Lovely. Of those three, I mean, really, first among equals, which would you imagine might score you the lowest? I think St Vincent and the yeah. Grenadines. OK, St yeah. Vincent and the Grenadines. We'll put that as your last answer. Yeah. Best shot at Pointless. And I think Solomon Islands is the first. Yeah. Solomon yeah. Islands we'll put first, and then Santa Mia and yeah. Principe goes in the middle. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got Solomon Islands, Sao Tome and Principe, and St Vincent and the Grenadines. Well, there we are. We've road-tested these answers. <laughs> we know they all stand a good chance. If any one of these turns out to be pointless, um, what would you like to do with the money? £1,250. Um, holiday. I think put it to a holiday. Yeah. But with... where would you go? Well, we love Florida. We've been about 19 or 20 times. Lovely. OK, well, very, very best of luck. Um, the Solomon Islands was your first answer. Let us find out. In all three cases, by the way, we're looking for island countries with no borders and a shorter coastline than the United Kingdom. Are you picturing the coastline of the Solomon Islands even now? <laughs> Let's find out. Uh, is it right? Is it pointless? £1,250, the Solomon Islands. Solomon Islands is right. It fits the category, it just has to be pointless, and then you can leave here with £1,250. We're into single figures, still going down with the Solomon Islands. We're going down, we've done it! Yes! Look at that, very well done indeed! <laughs> oh, that was just wonderful. A pointless educated, pointless informed totally. final round. <laughs> Absolutely immaculate, and Solomon Islands was a pointless answer. So you are taking home today's jackpot of £1,250. That's great. Yeah, very well done. You literally distilled the whole history of uh, the 12 years of pointless down to, <laughs> down to one question, including quite a small jackpot. So it's absolutely perfect. Couldn't be more, uh, couldn't be more pointless.
the other two, Sao Tome and Principe, of course, is a pointless answer. St Vincent and the Grenadines, of course, is a pointless answer as well. <laughs> uh, you mentioned the Marshall Islands, that was a pointless answer. <gasps> you mentioned St Kitts and Nevis, that was a pointless <gasps> answer. You did say, though, you said, oh, don't say Antigua and Barbuda because that's not always a pointless answer. Uh, and you got that wrong because it was a pointless well, answer. So, <laughs> listen, there we go. you haven't done that well, have you? So, uh, very, very well played. What a lovely category to cut. As soon as you said, yeah. oh, we wouldn't mind a bit of geography, I was looking at the answers here. I thought, <laughs> OK, we're in here. Um, let's start, shall we, with countries that uh, are bigger than the UK but uh, have a smaller population. Quite interesting. Mm. Uh, Algeria, Colombia, Kazakhstan. Because uh, Kazakhstan's massive, yeah. it's a smaller population than the UK. South Africa, uh, Afghanistan, Angola, Bolivia, Botswana, uh, Burkina Faso, uh, Central African Republic. Where would we be without the Central oh, African you know, Republic? Would have said that. Chad, Chile, Congo, Cote d'Ivoire, Ecuador, Gabon, Guinea, Iraq, Kenya, Malaysia, Mauritania, Mongolia, loads and a few more of the stands. Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. A pointless answer. Papua New Guinea is a pointless answer. Mozambique, Myanmar, Namibia, Oman. Loads of good pointless answers. Very, very well done if you've got any of those. Uh, now, countries that are smaller than us but have more borders. We only have one border, of course, so any country smaller than us but with two or more borders. Uh, you could have had uh, Bangladesh, Moldova, Panama, Togo. I mean, it's literally like a greatest hits. Yeah, it is. A pointless list, isn't it? <laughs> uh, you also could have had Albania, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Bhutan, Burundi, Cambodia, Costa Rica, Croatia, Czechia, Djibouti, Equatorial Guinea. There's nice. another favourite. Uh, Eritrea, Eswatini, our new favourite, the new name for Swaziland. Uh, Georgia, Ghana, Guatemala, Guinea-Bissau, Kyrgyzstan. North Macedonia, another new favourite there. Uh, loads and loads of answers there. And now, on this island nation, I think you very cleverly went for this because they're always pointless. This is genuinely, I'm going to go through all the answers, a greatest hits of pointless. <laughs> uh, we'll start with the four up here, which are less of a greatest hits of pointless, but there's Antigua and Barbuda, Fiji, Singapore, Trinidad and Tobago. And now, listen to this list. OK, every one of these has been a pointless answer at some point. And here we go again. Bahrain, OK, give you that. Cabo Verde. Nice. It used to be pointless when it was the Cape Verde Islands. Still pointless now as Cabo Verde. Uh, the Comoros, of course. Uh, Dominica, Grenada, Kiribati, uh, Marshall Islands, Micronesia, mm. Nauru and Palau. Both of those are pointless answers, as always. Uh, St Kitts and Nevis, St Vincent and the Grenadines, Sao Tome and Principe, Seychelles, Solomon Islands, Tonga. And we couldn't do this great if it's a pointless without like, these final two. Tuvalu and... Vanuatu. And Vanuatu. There we Absolutely go. Absolutely right. <laughs> How lovely. What a what an oh. absolute walk down memory lane. Oh, that's lovely. That was. How lovely you won some money from it as well. Oh. oh. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And thank oh. you once again to our winning players, Catherine and Julie, who take away today's jackpot of £1,250. Brilliant. Thank you, thank you. Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. From me and the Central African Republic. Goodbye. <laughs> And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>